everyone, and welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. Behind the Space Bar is a podcast for musicians, music directors, playback techs, really anyone that uses Ableton Live to perform on stage. Today, we're talking about getting your computer ready for the stage. I've got uh, six tips that I've pulled up here that I, I think encompass, to me, the most important things. There's going to be things I missed, things I didn't have on the list. So if you're listening to this, and you go, this is super important to me. This is something I've learned the hard way. Do me a favor, head over to the YouTube channel, leave a comment on this video. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment on this video. Let me know what's the most important thing that helps you get your computer ready for the stage. Now, this is your first time listening to Behind the Space Bar. Again, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, and I believe it was last week's episode. I kind of said something that I was like, oh, that's a perfect way to describe this. That each episode is kind of like a mini workshop. It's, it's not an interview necessarily. Um, on the, the previous iteration of this podcast, when it was called From Studio to Stage, I did have some interviews. I really hope to bring this back because I love interviews and we'll have some element of that or maybe a different show. I got to figure that out. Uh, and I want to reuse some of the content we had from the previous uh, episode because it was really, uh, our previous podcast was really, really good. But the way to think of this podcast is it's many short workshops, less than 20 minutes every single week, uh, Monday at 10 a.m. Central is where they go live. Okay, let's get to it. Um, thank you guys for watching. So glad you're here. Let's dive into getting your computer ready for the stage. Number one tip, if at all possible, have a separate stage computer. Now, I understand this isn't feasible for everyone. This has uh, never been feasible for me in all my time of using tracks on stage. I've always used a computer that was also an office computer, an email computer, a video editing computer, a recording podcast episode computer, as well as tracks. But if at all possible, use a stage computer. That stage computer um, uh, you know, needs to I'll get to all the other things at the, uh, at the end there, but uh, it's maybe going to have less programs on it. It's going to have less things enabled, less drivers that you've installed to test random audio routing things for live streaming. If at all possible, have a separate stage computer. You know that it works. It's on an OS that's stable. It's been tested. It's got a version of Ableton Live that you trust and know and know that everything's good. If at all possible, use a separate stage computer. I know that's not always possible. So when it's not possible, let's walk through these next five tips that I have for you that will apply. These also apply if you have a separate stage computer. So don't tune me out if you're like, I've got a stage computer, Will. Time to move on to the next episode. No, no, no. Hang out, stick with me. Um, these next five tips apply, but particularly if you are using the same computer for email, for video editing, for podcasting, for Facebooking that you use, Facebooking, is that a thing, uh, that you use on stage, please, please, please pay attention to these. Tip number two, make sure you have plenty of hard drive space available. This is the curse that has bit me more times than not. There'll be one here in a second that unfortunately has bit me more times than it should have that I'll admit my ignorance on this one. But this one has bitten me before to where I literally, I remember in Florida, um, I was on staff at a church there. We were doing a particular service where it was just grand piano. I think I was playing grand piano or maybe someone else was, it was weird. Um, maybe I was playing guitar. I don't remember what I was playing piano or guitar. We had a, uh, two vocalists, I believe. And one of the vocalists was playing electric and acoustic. Um, and it was all tracks dependent. And, uh, we started the first song and about a minute into it, uh, my track, uh, my computer just died. And the reason it died afterwards when I looked at it was I was at out of hard drive space. I was creating content that week to prepare for that service. Um, and I didn't delete that content and rendered it out as tracks. And I wasn't managing my hard drive space appropriately. I wasn't using external hard drives for storage. It was a really bad situation. So make sure you have plenty of hard drive space available. Um, the next kind of natural question there is how much hard drive space should you have available? And that's a good question. Um, the more you have available, the more comfortable it, things will be. Uh, I had a student sign up not too long ago that I believe they said they had like 20 gigs left on their computer and they went to download a file and it was like 20 gigs worth of content and their computer was basically kind of toast at that point. So I, I, it's hard for me actually do me a favor. And this is not like a, a weird YouTube or ploy to get more interactions on the video. Um, let me know if you're watching this and you're someone that would consider yourself, um, and I want to sort of say expert, or someone who's used tracks on stage before, consider yourself pretty competent. How much hard drive space do you have on your computer available right now? Just look, you know, on your Mac, go to the little Apple thing, click the thing. Let me know how much hard drive space you have available. Um, I would be interested to know. I would say 30 is a good starting place. Um, 50 is even better, 100 is even better. You know, as, as much as you can possibly have is great, but make sure you have plenty of hard drive space available. Um, and I'm saying 20 or 30 with everything you need loaded on it already. Not like, oh, I've got 30 gigs left. Let me install Ableton, Omnisphere, this, and that, and download these patches and presets, and then suddenly you have no space left. 
uh, uh, that's not a good thing. Number three, silence all notifications and interruptions. Apple gave us this incredibly, incredibly productive feature for on-stage use of laptops, which is the ability to receive phone calls and text on our laptop in the middle of a show. Um, this is resolved a little bit if you're using an audio interface, which is great, but there's still a possibility where, um, and I've seen uh, people do this, where suddenly you hear like the bloop, like the little messages sound when you send or receive a message. Uh, you can go into system preferences and make sure your system output is not set to your audio interface, but still silence all notifications, all interruptions, phone calls on Mac, text messages, notification icons. I know some scenarios where people use like messages to communicate with like the tour tour manager, production director or something to say like, oh, we're going to go long or the sets changed or do this. Sure. I get it. If that's you and it works for you, great. But I would highly suggest you silence all those and disable all that as much as possible. Number four, keep your gear updated, dot, 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 but not in the middle of tour or before a show. Here's what I mean by that. Um, don't be someone that um, is using old version of software, an old firmware version on their interface where there's a particular bug that's been squashed like years and years and years ago. The reason software developers release updates to software is sometimes features, but more often than not, it's bug fixes. Like they get the software in the wild. They, they, it's impossible for a software developer to test their software with every piece of hardware possible in every scenario possible. So once it gets out to users, they start to interact with it. They discover different bugs, they discover different things. And when they do that, then they hopefully report back to the company and the company goes, oh, let's check that out. Oh, it's because this one line of code, we fix it, boom, there's an update. If you go years and years struggling with an issue, don't blame Ableton because Ableton does a certain thing. They fix it two years ago, you're just being a punk that's not updating, right? So you should keep your gear updated, you should, um, update firmware on your interfaces, uh, update software, OS, uh, bug fixes. Um, but if you update, do not do it before the show and don't do it in the middle of a tour. Once you're on tour, you're done. Uh, if you're about to go on tour, maybe update, but give yourself a week or two before you like are starting rehearsals or preparing for the show. Because as soon as you update, it's very likely everything will be wiped out. You'll be starting over fresh. There'll be a new feature that confuses you. Don't do it the day before tour and then start hitting up the company that makes it and being pissed off at them for changing things. You waited to the last minute. Let's just be honest. And definitely for the love of everything holy, don't do it in the middle of tour. Don't do it before a show and then wonder why things don't work. Like that's you. We got to be professionals here. We got to be grown adults. Let's, let's act like it. Let's not update our stuff in the middle of the tour or show. Um, there's an episode of the podcast. I checked it out before we started episode 10 called should you update to live 11.1? It's kind of a sneaky little episode because it is about should you update to live 11.1? But in there, I kind of lay out my process for how I think you should update hardware and software that you're using live on stage. I, I talk about a, a process that's proven a process that works that will allow you to stay up to date not get like not be the person that's two years behind has a computer that's never been connected to the internet and has never received any updates and has a bunch of issues um if if that's your situation and, and it's working for you then sure keep that but i i talk about a process that will keep you up to date keep software hardware stuff refreshed but will um squash any ability for bugs to suddenly pop up right that's the goal of this um that's what we talk about in episode 10 so make sure that um you check that out i'll, I'll link to that in the show notes of this episode so you can see that uh tip number five um gosh i mentioned this earlier and ashamedly as a guy who owns a company uh, that teaches musicians music directors and playback techs how to use ableton live on stage i have done this more times, I was gonna say more times than I can account, but I can at least think of two situations where suddenly we're playing tracks, everything's going great, I'm playing guitar and shoop, everything dies. And I'm like, what the heck? And I go, I shouldn't have updated, I shouldn't have done this. The music director, the worship leader I'm working with looks at me like, what's going on? And I look over at my computer and guess where my power cable is, it's on the ground. Um, number five, make sure your computer is plugged in. This sounds really overly basic, but it's always the cable. When it comes to troubleshooting, it's always the cable. 100% of the time, it is the cable. So check your power. Make sure your power is plugged in. If 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 you um, have like a uh, uh, the the older, not old school, because old school Mac was the uh, MagSafe, which was pretty great. 
until someone would step on the cable and it would pull out, which was great as opposed to pulling your computer. But sometimes that would drop out and you wouldn't know it. But like the USB-C type cable that never fully connects into your Mac and is kind of annoying. Um, uh, just do some work to maybe tape down an end of the cable, uh, so that, uh, it's not going to move and shift and, you know, double check it and maybe look at your power thing to, to make sure that you're seeing the power is connected again, not a, not a cheap ploy to get you to comment on my YouTube video, but if, if you have any tips and tricks to keep your computer powered and connected, um, maybe a good tip is keep your battery charged in case your cable comes undone and you can make it through a show on a hundred percent charge. Maybe that's a pro tip. Let me know in the comments if you have a pro tip to keep your computer power plugged in, connected so that it doesn't come disconnected. Let please let me know over on the YouTube video. Uh, but number five, make sure your computer is plugged in. Number six, turn off all Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. This is essential. I preach this till I'm blue in the face, red in the face, purple in the face, whatever color my face turns up and ends up. Um, do not use Wi-Fi for live performance. It's unstable. It's unreliable. Um, people are going to get in the room. It's, it's going to be congested. Do not use Wi-Fi for live performance. So turn off your Wi-Fi and make sure Wi-Fi is off. Um, I was chatting with my buddy Kona uh, the other day, and he reminded me of a conversation we had a few years ago where he was on the road with an artist, and his computer was giving him tons and tons of issues. And what ended up happening is he didn't realize that his, his Bluetooth was on, and the computer was named in a way that the um, at the show, people thought it was that artist, like personal computer, because it had the artist name on it. You know, it'd be like Will's Will Doggett's laptop or whatever. And they're there to see, you know, renowned pop star, worldwide renowned pop star Will Doggett. And people started trying to airdrop stuff to that computer. And God only knows that I don't want to know what things are airdropped to that computer. But um, he had Bluetooth on, and he realized after the show the reason he was having issues is it was like bombarded with thousands and thousands of people trying to airdrop to this computer. Um, and so he turned Bluetooth off and everything was fine. So do not rely on wireless technology uh, for live performance. Performance. Turn off Bluetooth, turn off Wi-Fi. If you do that nine times out of 10, that's going to solve a lot of your issues. It's always the cable. If you keep your cable connected, that's going to solve your other issues. So I hope that was beneficial. Today's episode's a little shorter uh, than normal. But again, I would love some feedback from you. What did I miss in this list? What are things that you think about uh, when you try to get your computer ready for the stage that you have to have? Um, let me know again that tip of keeping computer power connected to your computer. What have you done to help to make that a little easier? Uh, just comment on the YouTube video. Let me know. If you're listening to Apple Podcasts, it really helps if you give a rating or review. I mentioned a couple episodes ago, I get an email that shows me the rankings of stuff. I think Norway was the other country, but I mentioned South Korea is a big one where um, uh, you see it going up and down the charts, which is pretty cool to me. I, I love that. Um, and so give me a rating review that helps that show up in the charts. It helps people discover it. If you know anyone that you think would like a mini workshop every Monday at 10 a.m. Central, uh, send them the podcast. Uh, growing the number of people uh, really helps. I'm doing this full time now. It's such a blessing. I'm so thankful for the opportunity. The more people that listen to this, just the, the easier it is to create this content. And then finally, if you're watching on YouTube or if you haven't yet, head over to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe, turn on the bell icon. I post a new video every single day. I know I'm crazy. I'm nuts. Uh, every single day, 10 a.m. Central, a new piece of content goes out. It's a great way to connect. It's a great way to connect with like-minded users and comment over on the video. But thanks so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Um, take care, everybody. Bye.